Star Blazers 2199, known in Japan as Space Battleship Yamato 2199, Yujo Zanjian Yamato 2199, Uchu Senken Yamato ni Ichi QQ, is a 2012–2013 Japanese military science fiction anime television series that is a remake of the first Space Battleship Yamato television series created by Yoshinobu Nishizaki and Leiji Matsumoto in 1970. Known in the United States as Star Blazers. The series is a space opera, and was originally screened back to back in theaters across Japan, a few episodes at a time prior to release on home video, and aired on television from April 7, 2013 to September 29, 2013. Voyager Entertainment currently licensed the series outside Japan, with Funimation streaming their English dub of the series starting on November 8, 2017. Two movies based on the series were released in 2014. A sequel series, titled Star Blazers, Space Battleship Yamato 2202, was released in theaters from February 27, 2017. Plot <inaudible> 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 In 2191, Earth made first contact with aliens called Gamilas. First attempt at peaceful contact with the Gamilas failed, resulting in interstellar war. The United Nations Cosmo Navy, even though outmatched by the Gamilas Space Naval Forces, was able to stop their direct assaults on Earth in the second battle for Mars, but suffered heavy losses in the process. The Gamilas, from their military base on Pluto, then started planetary bombardment with modified asteroids called planet bombs. The planet bombs hampered United Nations efforts to rebuild their space fleet and forced Earth to build underground cities to protect humanity. The planet bombs altered the atmosphere and irradiated the planetary surface, causing the complete destruction of the planet's biosphere. The Gamilas then started what is believed to be their first step in terraforming—preparing the Earth to be inhabited by themselves—by introducing plant life that was lethal to any life on Earth. With mankind facing extinction, the United Nations started planning for a small colony of humans to leave Earth in an attempt at the survival of humanity, called the Isumo Plan. But in early 2198 Starsha, from the planet Iskandar, learned of Earth's situation and dispatched her sister Eurisha to Earth. Eurisha brought with her the designs to what is called the Dimensional Wave Motion Engine, providing for interstellar flight along with other technological assistance to Earth. The Iskandarans revealed that they could reverse the damage done to the Earth with the Cosmo Reverse System. For technical reasons they could not send the system directly and would need Earth to send a ship for it. The United Nations then scrapped the Isumo plan in order to build a new Cosmo Navy ship to retrieve the Cosmo reverse system. The new ship was designed as a heavily armed space battleship. To conceal the ship's construction from the Gamilas, Earth built the new ship at the same site as the sunken World War II Yamato battleship. The new space battleship was also named the Yamato for which the series Space Battleship Yamato 2199 is named. Over the course of the series, the Yamato and its crew were continually attacked by Gamelan forces on Jupiter, the moons of Saturn, and Pluto. As the Yamato battled its way out of the Solar System and the Milky Way galaxy, Gamila's leader Abbot Desler took a personal interest in the unusually advanced and seemingly unstoppable Earth vessel. Suspicious of Iskander's involvement in the human's quest, Desla schemed to stop the Yamato at all costs before it could fulfill its mission—even as political intrigue plagued his empire. To this end, he ordered his top military commanders and most sophisticated spacecraft into the fight, putting the determination of the Yamato crew to even more rigorous tests as they coped with questions about their mission and strange incidents aboard their own ship. Cast Yamato crew Production 
The new series is a remake of the original space battleship Yamato television series from 1974, with some changes in the main story, new characters including several female ones, a more modern tech design, and an animation style inspired by that of the original series. The original intro music theme from the first series composed by Hiroshi Miyagawa with vocals by Isao Sasaki has also been re-scored for this new production by Hiroshi's son Akira. Yutaka Izabuchi serves as supervising director, with character designs by Nobuteru Yuki, and Junichiro Tamamori and Makoto Kobayashi in charge of mecha and conceptual designs. The series is animated by AIC episodes 1 to 10 and later by Ebek episodes 11 to 26. Famous anime director and creator Hideaki Anno designed the new series opening sequence, which is a homage to the one that appeared in the first television series. The full anime series started airing on April 7, 2013, in the MBS, TBS's 5 o'clock p.m. timeslot, replacing Magi, the Labyrinth of Magic, the Yamato Wreck in the 1974 series where the space battleship Yamato was built under was based on the general assumption in the 1970s that the warship sank intact. When the actual wreck was found in 1985, it was in a much more mangled shape than previously thought. In an April 2013 interview with Japanese online hobby shop AMIAMI, Bandai model developer Hirofumi Kishiyama said the emergence of the space battleship itself in 2199 was a plot device that needed to be resolved. Taking into account the 1985 discovery, he said the new Yamato wreck is simply camouflage for the warship being built underneath. Where the 1974 space battleship Yamato was conceptualized to be the same length as the original battleship at 263 meters, the spaceship in the new series was enlarged to 333 meters to address design discrepancies found in the first show. Characters who appeared in the original series' second and third seasons are included in 2199 as well. The first episode of the show has been dubbed into English by Bang Zoom Entertainment, and was shown at both Anime Expo and San Diego ComicsCon in the summer of 2013. In 2014, a feature length compilation of the Space Battleship Yamato 2199 series titled Space Battleship Yamato 2199 A Voyage to Remember and an original movie based on the series, Space Battleship Yamato 2199 Odyssey of the Celestial Ark, were released. On November 3, 2017, Funimation announced that they had acquired streaming rights to the series and would stream the English dub on November 8. Marketing Release Episode 1 of the series was previewed on April 6, 2012 on Family Gekujo Channel, although the remaining 25-minute episodes did not run on television until 2013. Episodes 1 and 2 of the new series were released as a 50-minute anime film called Dai Isho Harukanaru Tabadachi, Chapter 1, The Long Journey. Premiering in Japanese cinemas on April 7, 2012 the 67th anniversary of the loss of the Yamato during the Battle of Okinawa. It was also released on May 25, 2012 as Blu-ray and DVD format volumes in Japan. Six more anime films which will be 100 plus minute compilations, containing four episodes each, for a total of 26, will be released every few months in select theaters across Japan through 2013. The series commenced weekly broadcast on April 7, 2013. The second film, Dai Nisho, Taiyokan no Shitu, Chapter 2, Desperate Struggle in the Heliosphere, featured episodes 3 to 6. It opened in 10 theaters in Japan on June 30, 2012. The Blu-ray disc and DVD volumes were released on July 27, 2012. The third film, Dai Sansho, Hatsunaki Kakai, Chapter 3, The Endless Voyage, 
featuring episodes 7 to 10, opened in 12 Japanese theaters from October 13 through October 26, 2012, expanding from 10 theaters for the previous films. The Blu-ray and DVD volumes were released on November 22, 2012. The fourth film, Dai Yonsho, Jinja Henkyo no Kobo, Chapter 4, Defense of the Galactic March. Featured episodes 11 to 14, and opened in 12 Japanese theaters from January 12 through January 26, 2013. The Blu ray and DVD volumes were released on February 22, 2013. The fifth film, Dai Gosho, Bokyo no Gingakan Kuken, Chapter 5, The Redolence of Intergalactic Space. Featuring episodes 15 to 18, was released in 12 Japanese theaters on April 13, 2013. The Blu-ray and DVD volumes were released on May 28, 2013. The sixth film, Dai Rokusho, Totatsu, Dai Magellan, Chapter 6, Arrival, Large Magellanic Cloud. Featuring episodes 19 to 22, was released in 16 Japanese theaters on June 15, 2013. The Blu-ray and DVD volumes were released on July 26, 2013. The seventh and final film, Dai Nanasho, Soshi Kan Wa Iku Chapter 7, And Now the Warship Comes, featuring episodes 23–26 was released in Japanese theaters on August 24, 2013. Unlike the previous episodes other than the first one, they first aired on TV before the Blu-ray and DVD volumes were released on October 25, 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Compilation film Space Battleship Yamato 2199, A Voyage to Remember Yujo Zanjian Yamato 2199 Juiyi no Hanghai, Uchu Senken Yamato 2199, Suyoku no Koukai, also known as Space Battleship Yamato 2199, Voyage of Remembrance, is a 2014 Japanese anime recap film that compiles the 26 episodes of the Space Battleship Yamato 2000 1199 anime series. Writers have unofficially used the English translations Space Battleship Yamato 2199, Voyage of Remembrance and Space Battleship Yamato 2199, A Voyage to Remember. However, the distributor has yet to choose an official English language title. Toys, models Bandai started releasing kits based on the vehicles seen in the series in 2012. As of January 2015, the company produced one one-thousandth scale models of the Yamato, two sets of UNCN warships, four sets of Garmila's warships, the Gamila's Palmyria class assault carrier, the Gelvades class assault carrier, Darald and the Gaipalon class multi-deck carriers Lambia, Balgre, and the Skadurg. Some of these kits also contain bonus kits, including reissues of certain warship kits from the original series Mecha Collection line. The line Garmila's warships are also available as online exclusive Imperial Guard sets, sporting green-blue colors. Test shots of a 1/1000th version of the Zelgud class dreadnought Domulus III and the Doizula II dreadnought were made public in 2013. Bandai originally held back on a full release for the Domulus III, stating that the model's size, around two feet long, was too big for the average Japanese home. The 1/500th release of the Yamato, measuring at over two feet two inches, eventually prompted the release. The Gatlantis Empire's ships also appeared in the main kit line and the Mecha Collection line in 2014. Vehicles from the series are available in 172nd scale. The line started with the Alpha-1 and Alpha-2 Cosmo Zeros in 2012. The March 2013 issue of Dengeki Hobby magazine had a free 172nd Cosmo Falcon fighter packaged and Bandai followed suit with recast of the Cosmo Falcon in Saburo Kato and Akira Yamamoto's paint schemes later in 2013. 
Some of the 1/1000th kits also have their own space fighter models, with the Palmyria including a free DWG-229 Melinka flying wing bomber, two FG-14 Zadora fighters with the Balgré, a DWG-262 Seasvark fighter with Garmila's warship Set 3 and the FG-156 Sumaruhi recon plane with Garmila's warship Set IV. Taking off from previous efforts to produce specific paint sets for Gundam HGUC models, Gunza Sangyo is also producing special paint sets for the 2199 warship kits. In January 2014, Bandai also released a Yamato 2199 version of the battleship Yamato number GX64 in their Soul of Chogokan line of adult collector's toys, which is a total redesign from their previous release number GX57. Topic: <laughs> Differences from the original series. The series is markedly different from the original in many ways. Those include The Yamato is bigger than previous incarnations of the ship, because the anime design team now scaled the entire ship to be on proportion with the dimensions of the bridge, so now Yamato is 333 meters long the original is 263 meters long. Also, the entire ship has been internally reworked to make more sense and it is no longer built in the wreck of the original sunken battleship Yamato. Queen Starsha had only one sister, Sasha Astra in the English dub, in the original series, who was sent to Earth with both Starsha's message and the plans for the wave motion engine. In 2199, the Queen has two sisters, Eurisha and Sasha. Eurisha was sent to Earth one year before Sasha with the message and the engine schematics. Sasha was tasked with bringing the engine's activation core. Eurisha bears an uncanny resemblance to Yuki, leading to a protracted case of mistaken identity between them, with Yuki even being taken prisoner by Gamila's operatives who believe she is Eurisha. The Yamato departs Earth with a much larger crew of 999 crew on board. In the original series, Yamato had a crew of 114. This is quite possibly a nod to Galaxy Express 999, another series created by Leiji Matsumoto. While main weapons remain largely the same, the Yamato now has missile ports in the underkill to cover that previously assumed blind spot. Captain Okita is much more involved in the storyline. In the original Yamato, his illness took him out much sooner and he spent more time laid up in bed. Here, he remains in command almost to the end. There is considerable cordial if tense interaction between Gamilas and humans, something that did not happen in the original series. In the original series, Cody assumed command of the Yamato when Okita was taken ill. Here, Sanada is the designated XO and takes over when Okita cannot command. Sanada is considerably fleshed out from the original series, with much more backstory and complexity to his character. The Analyzer robot repeatedly sexually harassed Yuki in the original series, but it is much better behaved in the remake. In the original version, Sanada's limbs were cybernetic. There is no indication of that in 2199. The Yamato's main guns can fire projectile shells in addition to anti-electron pulses. In the first series, she never fired shells which turn out to be critical to the ship's survival in more than one instance. Yuki is no longer needed in the medical bay, as there is full medical staff on board. There are many more women compared to the original series since now one third of the crew is female, including a pilot and an intelligence officer. The character Akira Yamamoto is made into a woman, and has a much larger role in this part of the story. We see much more of Gamila's society. Many of its leaders are shown sympathetically to be family men who are more worried about their children than war. People conquered by Gamilas serve as second-class citizens, and are often looked down upon by Gamilas. 
Abelt Dessler's motivations are much more totalitarian. In the original series, Earth was bombarded and its atmosphere changed due to his plans to move his people there from his dying homeworld. In 2199, Earth's bombardment is simply a part of his policy. Advanced intelligent species either join the Empire as second class citizens or they will be destroyed. The Gamila's military and Dessler are much more obvious Nazi figures than before. Their clothing is similar to Nazi dress field uniforms, they wear a logo on their neck that looks like the SS lightning bolts and the names of all of the admirals and generals are distinctly German sounding, like Dietz, Goa, Hiss, Dommel and Schultz, most of whom are allegories of the top military officers of Nazi Germany. Despite this, in one sense the Gamilas do still reflect Americans. The military platoon made up of Zaltzi volunteers, second-class citizens of the Gamilas, is still called the 442nd Special Operations Platoon, a reference to the U.S. Army's heavily decorated 442nd Infantry Regiment during World War II, made up of Japanese volunteers. The official designations for many Gamilas assets, such as the Snucker dive bomber, which features the inverted gull wings of the Stuka, and DWG-262 fighter, which visually is similar to the Mi-262, bear similarities to their WW-2 counterparts. The suicide run of Mamoru Kodi's command, Yukakazi, occurs for a different motive, to cover the retreat of Okita rather than being unable to bear the shame of defeat as in the original. This was the motive given in the Star Blazers dub, and also used in the 2010 live-action film. The Gamila's fleet has a new ship, the Dimensional Submarine, commanded by Captain Flaken, whom even his peers acknowledge is independent and difficult to control. The sub can hide in another dimension and fire torpedoes into regular space. This establishes the character and submarine in the series well before being seen in the third season Bola Wars of the original series. After surviving the Battle of Pluto and being taken prisoner, Mamoru Kodi crash landed on Iskander and was rescued by Starsha. In the original series, she nursed him back to health, the two fell in love, and he remained with her on a scanner to rebuild its population. In 2199, he died before the Yamato arrived, leaving a recorded message. While the Yamato has an all-Japanese crew, she flies as a United Nations ship. The United Nations logo is seen on the vessel and Okita talks to United Nations officials via long-range communication, not officials in Japan. In the early episodes of the original 1974 series, Gamila's characters had Caucasian skin tones. Desla also had a more yellowish skin tone in early appearances. This abruptly changed after episode 10 when all Gamila's characters were given a blue skin tone to make them more alien in appearance. The discrepancy remains unexplained. In the 2199 series, the difference is justified by establishing Caucasian Gamila's characters such as Schultz, Gans, and the commander of the Jupiter floating continent as Zaltzi, a subject race of Gamila's blue skinned members being of the Imperial race. This also effectively establishes Gamilas as an interstellar empire that absorbs other races into its culture. The Gamilas Empire is shown using a number of robotic soldiers, possibly another nod to the Star Blazers dub, which needed to justify the enemy soldiers being shot at in order to make the original series less violent. But most likely they are simply an earlier introduction of the robot soldiers shown in the 1978 original series movie. Farewell to Space Battleship Yamato. Topic Reception. Kotaku reviewer Richard Eisenby praised Yamato 2199, stating that as a series, it succeeded on nearly every level. It took one of the classic 70s anime, Space Battleship Yamato called Starblazers in the West, and brought it to a new generation by adding new characters, a deeper story, and stunning visuals." However, he also gave the film a voyage to remember an unequivocally negative judgment. 
In his review, Eisenby noted that unlike many other recap anime movies, A Voyage to Remember added virtually no meaningful new content to the Yamato 2199 story. He went on to point out that the 26 episodes of the series had already been shown in cinemas and therefore did not benefit from an additional big screen showing, and with nine and a half hours of original story cut to two and a half for the recap film, backstory and character development were almost completely sacrificed. 